this figure is a real a staggering figure. Okay? It's a real surprise uh, to the world, and including me, that he used that a very high uh, figure uh, to give pledge to the to the world community. But at the same time, along the way, he also wants to have our economic growth at seven percent. So how do you balance the 7% economic growth and emission reduction by 41%, 26% or 41%? And we are so grateful <coughs> to our friends from Norway that in the year uh, 2010, uh, they immediately uh, made an agreement with us, uh, especially in the scope of Red Plus program in Indonesia, and by providing us uh, one billion US dollar that's not a uh, money that uh, comes uh, freely but basically it's a uh, perform and pay uh, kind of uh, grant that means that if we uh, are able and prove that we can reduce the emission then there will be ca payment coming from uh, Oslo so basically that is the things that uh, on the basis of the letter of intent between Norway and and Indonesia, but that <coughs> agreement is very historical, since by uh, by that a new paradigm just started in Indonesia. <coughs> so we review not very uh, easy our legislation. We review our institution uh, establishment. We review our practices. And we can do that because the president set up a, a task force. Uh, I'm, I'm appointed as the head of the task force. And so things started basically in the year 2010. <coughs> Our national agency for climate change, the DNPI, together with uh, our national uh, planning agency, uh, Right after that, came up with the national uh, policy in which the reduction of CO2 by the year 2020 should uh, come from this uh, forest and peatland uh, protection. And it's given an 83% 83 83 uh, target. It's very high. A target for 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 this uh, peatland and and forest, but anyway, that's the national policy, and we have to live with that. Uh, you can see that from the waste and energy transportation and agriculture, the amount of the target is not that high. So things are really depending on the performance of this Red Plus program in Indonesia, and that's meaning me and my team. Okay. We have to set up this uh, 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 national agency, and etc. etc. So that is the things that uh, happening in, in in Indonesia, and and basically this task force that was established uh, two years ago, it's still now in the in the in the in the process, and. It will terminate by the end of the year by having a national agency for Red Plus. So in the past one year, all necessary things that should be there for the national agency to operate uh, effectively are being prepared. For instance, now we are in the final process of having a funding instrument. One billion coming from Norway, but I understand that other countries are also willing to participate in this uh, big effort in Indonesia, and as well as other uh, multilateral like the World Bank, ADB. So things basically within this uh, national. How much time do I have, uh, Vijay? Okay, tell me. If, uh, I'm running out of time. Okay, so. We are preparing this, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the MRV uh, mechanism. Six are scattered between the national uh, Landsat uh, agency, 
uh, the mapping agency. So we have to coordinate all this such that we can have an MRV uh, agency mechanism that is of high integrity because MRV is so important and that's the basic of uh, everybody around the world to uh, measure performance whether it's successful or not successful. And, and the fee, we invite all stakeholders to get involved to verify the finding that's reported based on our measuring. And other things uh, like the pilot province and, and central Kalimantan, Kalimantan. Ah. Why do we need a, a pilot province? Basically, Indonesia is a big country, okay? And we have 34 provinces. There's no way that you can, uh, what do you call it, uh, implement a concept right away nationwide such that we have to pick one uh, what do you call it uh, province uh, in which we quote unquote do uh, a lot of experimentation but one thing that is really important and now we are in the process of uh, continuous improving it is to have a, a one map for indonesia a one map so maybe some of you are really surprised well, why do we need a, a one map don't you have any map? Yes, we have many uh, uh, map in you know, in Asia, but basically there are many, many maps. Okay, even uh, the the land bureau have their own map. The agriculture have their own map. Uh, the Ministry of Forestry. Some say that uh, even in that one ministry, you have three or four maps. Okay, depending on what unit, uh, what you call it, uh, have uh, the mission uh, in, in in terms of that map. And that is. Uh, something that is uh, really uh, problematic and if you find lots of problems that we are facing now basically because in the past we have so many maps uh, the Minister of Mining and Energy they have, have their own maps and a sudden now we realized after we integrate all these maps that there's many overlaps this is just a case in one of the districts uh, in, in Indonesia and in, in East Kalimantan in which there are overlaps between the forest, the, the mining and uh, what do you call plantation uh, uh, concession so this is something that is really uh, very important before we can step further in the Red Plus program in trying to reduce emission from deforestation and land degradation the debate now is how large is your forest cover basically? Is it 71 million, 61 million? We are st still counting it. The beauty of this one map program is that everybody on the ground are welcome to, uh, to, to, to uh, give inputs. So there are many interesting things. When, when it comes to uh, ground truthing, then actually no one agency is available to do that in an uh, area as vast as Indonesia. So we have to invite all the NGOs, all the village people, everybody to, uh, to help us in the ground truth thing. Interesting uh, happening is that in a sudden we realize that an area is basically covered by forest. Okay, so uh, we change that. But the many cases is that since they are defined as forest, actually there's no forest anymore. Okay? So that kind of things uh, that's happening and we've been doing this for the past uh, one and a half years there will be another uh, six months uh, for this and we will do hope that at least we can ha get uh, or reach a uh, 100% uh, truth of this uh, uh, a map a high integrity map we have one map but the process is more important and that's the first time in Indonesia that a policy, a higher level policy, is in the hands of so many people to come up with this uh, uh, result. And after uh, analyzing the reality, go, go back to this picture. Reality, actually, when it comes to forest uh, or deforestation, then we are dealing with so many players uh, we, I can name uh, p police uh, corrupt police uh, units okay, in, the, in, the, in the regions uh, you can 
uh, I can I can mention uh, the companies uh, that still uh, what they call a tract of land. Uh, you name it, okay. And improper licenses issued by the district head or the governor. So there's a, so many things happening underground. Things are not uh, what you call it uh, simple. So we are we are our concept is actually the one that can protect the forest are those who live in the forest. So and that is the the basic premise of the whole approach that although we are fighting deforestation to achieve what you call it uh, 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 reduction of a of emission but basically we are dealing with trees or forest that is cut or not cut and we want to have forest that will be, will be there and in order to maintain this forest we have to have the support from the people and you have the support of the people and they have a hope of their future and that means that poverty elevation is something that's really important so the core of the whole program although we are, we are dealing with carbon we are dealing with deforestation land degradation, land degradation but basically the whole core of the whole thing is poverty if you cannot alleviate poverty for sure nobody else can help you in protecting the forest. Enrich is so huge. So we have to uh, empower these people. Starting from like this, this is very classical things, okay? But in Indonesia, we have an association of local people. In English word, you use uh, indigenous people. We don't use that because that's uh, something that is uh, a little bit different, okay? We have other terms. Uh, and that is the customary uh, people, whatever it is. But basically these people are those people living in the forest or close to the forest and then they make a living from the forest and not cutting the trees. We have to have this support. So we have a close cooperation with Aman. Aman is the abbreviation of this uh, customary people like this. Uh, and you see this conflict. This is part of the conflict between the, 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 the people living in the forest and the concession holder. So that is something that we have to avoid. And there's an, a, a program of high priority now. But we realized that if we want to protect all this, then we have to be deal with these people. And these people, they have, have to have hope that their livelihood, their welfare will be improved next year, the year after next, and okay in the future so this is basically the, the the program and if some of you follow what happened in Indonesia with the Kuala Tripa case that is typical case in Indonesia and this is something that we use as a, a, a case in which we <coughs> another experiment is being done here as I mentioned about the map every agency have their own map but basically also every agency have their own law so when it comes a case like this the quest the first question usually in the past will be which law shall be used is it the environment the forestry if it's mining that the mining or the the what do you call it the, the law on decentralization regional autonomy you name it and this to pick or confusing and a, a system in which integrity is questionable usually those who did the wrong thing get free because they're confusing the law itself so the, it's the first time that we can integrate everything because in this uh, task force we have the working group on law enforcement and legal review so from this case we learn on how to solve this problem. This is the first time, the first time in the Republic history that the one who did the wrong is now accused and is in the court. Maybe you can surprise with this, but that's something that is really uh, important. So that's, that's the Kuala Tripa case is a, a case uh, of a historical milestone and we do hope that it's the beginning of a new era. Now, 
we have to wait uh, this is the decision of the court that is something that is important it's so important such that this is the first time that the forest or the deforestation illegal deforestation is now uh, is applying the illegal what do you call it uh, the corruption and the money laundering two uh, very important uh, accusation that we put in place to indict uh, people and company so basically that's uh, uh, the progress uh, so far and because I'm 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 uh, in charge for the Red Plus, Red Plus program uh, I seek uh, association cooperation of other institutions so I'm so glad that uh, we had a, a fr friend from Yasa okay, and we had uh, this kind of uh, workshop last year and that's the beginning that one thing that is really important for a developing country like Indonesia or maybe other countries and actually I had a very nice discussion yesterday with the environment uh, program of the United Nations that basically what's happening now uh, we, ha we observe that science development, science community is getting further away from the policy making policy now is basically uh, a process of uh, more political and less and less scientific.